to another. I thank you for just blessing us as a church family. Be with our pastor. Keep him and guide him. Brother is mine. And as we move in the series of holiness, help us to take it and apply it to our lives. Father, yeah, we fall short. Help us to get up. When we get up, help us not to hold it against ourselves. But to go on and run like a child of God.
I believe that smart preachers turn preaching over to the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for an opportunity to stand again. Uh, we greet you with Jesus' joy. We thank God for the trinity of his existence, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Will you help me give Jesus praise today? All over this building. Hasn't he been good? I said, hasn't he been good? Oh, he's been better than good. Haven't he been good? Haven't he been good? You know why I praise him? Because he keeps putting up with me. I know y'all praise him for the little stuff you got, but I praise him because he keeps tolerating me. Oh, God, I thank you. I said, oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sunday, thank God I'm trying to move on so I can preach, but the Holy Ghost still stay right there. Say, stay right there. I'm trying to. My God, oh Jesus. Y'all must have been praying for this morning because I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. And if I feel something about to happen, I feel something about to happen in here today. I don't know. Wow. my God.
God is. We, what a joy it is to be in his presence. George, George, um, the Lord just whispered in my ear, he's not done working with you. George, the Lord just whispered in my ear that he's about to reward your faithfulness. with an unusual with an unusual blessing he told me to tell you that you're, he's not done with you and that if you would just surrender you will see what's left in your service in your ministry but you're also going to see everything you've been praying for come to pass. Somebody go get Sandy and tell her to come here right now. Tell Sandy to come here right now. The Lord is moving. The Lord is moving and I don't want to ignore what he said. I don't want to ignore what he said. I don't want to ignore. Come here, Sandy. Come here. Come here. Sandy, while you're walking, the Lord whispered in my ear that you were suffering in silence and that you've been hiding behind your smiles and, um, and that you've been hiding behind your happiness. But he said the type of blessing that's about to hit your house, the type of blessing that's about to hit your house is not going to only change your credit score, but it's going to change your finances. The business you've been trying to open to help people, the pro nonprofit you've been trying to give birth to, to help people and specifically children, he's going to grant you that because you've been faithful. He said, because you have kept yourself only to him and been holy and doing what he asked, he's about to reward you openly for you serving him privately. And your children, your grandchildren, what he's about to birth in you, they will live off of for years. And I believe that God is nowhere near finished with you. And he told me just now, he whispered in my ear to tell you that their eyes have not seen nor ears have heard what he's about to do with you. You ain't never seen joy like you're about to see it now. You ain't never seen happiness like you're about to see it now. You've been hurting secretly. You've been crying secretly. But the Holy Ghost said that no longer, he said every tear you shed, he's about to restore it. Every broken place, he's about to heal it. And in the name of Jesus, he's going to reveal every enemy that's in your camp that looks like a friend he's going to show them that you are greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world and you are going to do it in front of everybody he said everything you sold into people that you didn't ask for back you didn't ask for anything people you put money in their pocket paid bills out of your own house children you've taken care of the vision he gives you all of that is going to come back he said it's your season it's your time and you don't have to worry about nothing else the only decision you gonna have to make is if you have to stay on your job because God said he's about to release that in Jesus name in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. In the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 21 through 23, I had some announcements I needed to make, but uh, I I'm just going to jump. Is it all right if I just jump right into the word? I know I had some announcements to make, but I... I, I 
I, I, the Holy Ghost will work that out. I, I need to get right into this word. I need to stay right here in this vein. I have to be, I have to follow what the Lord says. Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 21 through 23, as promised, um, I am beginning a series entitled Holiness, Holiness. Romans chapter 6, um, verse 21 through 23. And uh, as promised, I am going to begin a series today entitled Holiness. And I believe that there is a word for us in the house on today. This series entitled Holiness um, is an unusual one that God has given me. I want to share it with you. Uh, we're going to begin part one of that today. I've been waiting on this for a couple weeks now, and the Lord is about to give us uh, some very wholesome instructions on uh, this topic concerning holiness. Romans chapter 6, verse 21 through 23. Say amen when you found it. Uh, if you don't have it, just look on with somebody. I don't want you to think I made it up. Um, hoping that we can get these scriptures on the screen. We'll be bouncing all over the Bible today. Um, we'll be bouncing all over the Bible today. So um, um, as for those of you who don't know, a topical message is when we take the same topic and, and, and discuss it through a, very, a variety of scriptures while a textual message is something where you preach just that specific text, will be topical uh, today. Um, I don't know how long this series is gonna last. I, it's, it's gonna stop when the Holy Ghost says it's over. Uh, Romans chapter six, verse 21 through 23, and it reads like this. What benefit, I'm gonna be reading from the NIV version. It reads, what benefit did you reap at, the time, at that time from the things you are now ashamed of. Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Verse 23, 22 says, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. The benefit you reap leads to holiness. And I want to talk from the thought what holiness is. What holiness is. The story is told of ancient Roman civilization where a king decides to make a surprise visit to a few homes within the kingdom. It was not normal for the king to leave the palace and go visit a, a home in the land. But the king had sent out word and announced that he was going to make some visits to the homes of certain uh, 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 citizens in the land. The king sends this announcement out, and when the announcement goes out, immediately those in the land begin to prepare for the king's arrival. The king did not say whose house he was going to. He only said when he was coming. He did not say what home he was going to. And so the entire land begins to prepare for the day that the king might show up. And so uh, the king gets to certain houses, and when they get, he gets to these houses, they have prepared uh, scrumptious, their best meal. They have prepared their best look of their home. They have put on their best clothes because they wanted to be properly dressed. 
for the king. As a matter of fact, it is customary that when you are in the presence of the king, you ought to bring your best and look your best and be your best. And so it is even if he comes to his to their house, they were supposed to bring their best, be their best, as more importantly, look their best. But it was one home the king particularly arrived at who evidently did not get the news of the king's arrival. And so the king shows up and the house is a mess. There is nothing prepared to offer the king. And more importantly, everyone in the household was underdressed. The king was, the Roman king was heavily offended because they had just disrespected royalty for being underdressed. And I want you to understand today, I use this story as a springboard to dive into our topic for today to tell you that holiness is God's way of getting us dressed for the king. Ah, we must understand that the king is on his way to see us. And if we are not properly dressed, we are in some serious trouble. I'm deeply concerned that when the king returns, he will find many of us church folks improperly dressed without holiness. I'm worried that he will find us living in nice houses with unholy character. I'm concerned that he'll find us driving nice cars with carnal mindsets. I'm concerned that he'll find us dressed to impress everybody but him. I'm, the sad reality is, is that we are dressed to, to impress everybody but the king. We will dress for the restaurant, dress for the club, get dressed for church, but when the king shows up, we don't have on any holiness, we don't have on any behavior, we don't have on any morals, and the sad reality is is that we are in a presence of a king underdressed. But I need to tell somebody that soon and very soon we're going to see the king and holiness gets you dressed to see the soon coming king. I'm so sick and tired of preachers preaching everything but Jesus is on the way back. They telling you how to get a loan, telling you how to get better finances, telling you how to get a husband, telling you how to get a wife, telling you how to start a digital ministry. We talking about everything but the return of Jesus and let me be clear, Jesus is coming back and when the king arrives you better be dressed I'm concerned that if the king walked into your house right now how your house would look would he find you practicing marriage with somebody you ain't married to would he find you Ah, if the king grabs your phone, matter of fact, he don't need it because he's omniscient. He knows everything. If the king went through all your business, I wonder would he find you properly dressed? Can I ask you a question? Are you ready to see the king? Preachers have made this tragic mistake. We preaching about everything but Jesus on his way back. But let me send you a reminder in case you forgot. He is on his way back. And as a matter of fact, the time is closer now than it has ever been before. The Bible is really, really, really just preaching itself right now. The Bible says there will be pestilence in the last days. Those are called pandemics. Just read your Bible. In these last days, the Bible, we ain't got to wait for the last days. They already here. And too many of us are living like Jesus ain't coming back. 
We churching like Jesus ain't coming back. And I need to pull over and remind somebody that he ain't coming back for no fraternities. He ain't coming back for no, no choir members. He ain't coming back for no work, no, no, no great employees. He ain't come, your credit ain't going to get you in. Your looks ain't going to get you in. But the Bible says he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. You better get dressed. The king is coming. And in our text today, the Apostle Paul conveys the concept of holiness as a matter of life and death. Many of our sister denominations leave church congregants with two eternal options, holiness or hell. They tell, they tell you, they teach you that either you're going to live holy or you're going to hell, implying that we can earn our salvation with moral behavior. And, 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 but, 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 but this statement divides the body of Christ between living sinless lives or being justified by grace. Both sides support their theology with various scriptures like the passage we just read. And to settle this argument, I concluded that it is not a matter of information about the scriptures, but a matter of proper interpretation of the scriptures. See, anybody can quote a verse and make you understand their point, but if you have not properly interpreted that verse, then what you have done is taken the text out of context. And if you take the text out of context, ain't nothing left but the con. Preach, Pastor Jay. I'm trying as hard as I can. And so I need us, if we're going to settle this matter on holiness, we better have the right interpretation of scripture. One, 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 one that desires to learn how to live holy must begin with a desire to properly define holiness. See, we can't begin to discuss how to live holy until we've understood or settled on what holiness is. Mm -hmm. And so, so holiness, the word holy, uh, holiness includes the word holy, the root word of it is holy. And the word holy is a, it means to be consecrated, it means to be separated, it means to be set apart, watch this, from common use. It means to be set apart from common use. Uh, holy uh, uh, means to be. It, it, it means to be to be to be sanctified. It means to be set apart. It means to be consecrated. It means to be. It means to be separated, set apart from common use. In other words, when something or someone is considered holy, they are not normal. They are set apart from common use and common things. Why? Well, let me give you an example. This is called the, that we are assembled in. Is called the sanctuary. Why is it? called the sanctuary because it's been sanctified it has been set apart that's why any and everything can't go on in the sanctuary now there are common areas to the building like the foyer and the fellowship hall but this is the sanctuary and you ought to be careful what you do in the sanctuary because it has been set apart that's why the old saints when let your kids play in the pulpit because it was set apart. And I, but I think the problem with the church is we've got places that are set apart, but people that are not set apart. Oh my God, you mean to tell me your church is holy, but you ain't holy? Baby, you have been set apart. When you got saved, you are no longer reserved for common use. You can't be used the way everybody else is used. You can't do what everybody else do because you are saved. But, 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 but the word holy is slightly different than the word holiness. Because holiness means the word holiness uh, uh, in, in the Old Testament Hebrew, it means to cut or to separate. It means to cut or to separate. 
Fundamentally, holiness is a cutting off or a separation from what is unclean, but watch this, and a consecration to what is clean. It's a twofold meaning. When something is operating in holiness, it is separation from the unclean. But once it is separated, it is now consecrated for what is clean. See, a lot of us have been separated, but we won't be consecrated. Therefore, making you unholy. See, 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 you can be separated, but the separation means nothing without the consecration. See, separation means you've been set apart, but until you've been consecrated to the, un to the clean thing, then you might as well go back to what you've been doing. It's a twofold meaning. Too many of us, we separated because we, we, we believers, but we haven't been consecrated. So therefore, we end up living the same life we used to live. Slide back into the same lifestyle we used to have. But, the, but, but when you've been separated, you got to be consecrated. Consecrated means committed. It means devoted. It means sold out. Uh-oh, we got a problem with that word there because most churchgoers think that as long as they separated, they ain't got to be consecrated. But when you're consecrated, ain't nobody got to ask you to show up to church. Ain't nobody got to ask you to come in and sing in the choir. Ain't nobody got to ask you to help out with the kids. Ain't nobody got to ask you. Why? Because you've been consecrated. And I'm afraid a lot of our church members have been separated, but you ain't consecrated. Hmm. And all this begs the question, well, am I going to hell if I'm not living holy? All this begs the question, if I don't live holy, am I going to hell? If I'm not holy, am I going to hell? And most of us who are of the modern Christian church, who are of the Baptist faith, or would answer this question and say, no, because God died for our sins. But I think I need to correct your theology. <laughs> Can I correct your theology? You ain't going to like me today. I hope y'all got your shout out already because you ain't going to like me today. Uh, the question is, if I am not holy, will I go to hell? Let me answer that by saying absolutely yes, you will go to hell for not being holy. Ooh, Pastor, that's scary. Because, Pastor, are you telling me that I have to live perfect and, or I'm going to hell when I might as well go now? But let me be clear. This is why we need to understand. It's not the fact that we're going to hell for not being holy. It's the fact that we have not properly defined what holiness is. And that is what I want to teach about today is about what holiness is. If you look at verse 22, you will discover something about holiness that usually we try to skip over. If you look at Romans chapter 6 verse 22, I really hope y'all can get these scriptures on the screen, but if you're not, if you can't, then I'm going to have to just do it old school and go to, my, to the Bible. But um, Romans chapter 6 verse 22, I want you to look at something. I want you to see something in this verse. In, 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 in this verse. God, how, 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 I want you to see something here. He says, but now that you have been set free from sin, Okay, now let's take that phrase right there. When you got saved, you've been set free from sin. How, what does that mean? Well, you're set free from sin as in all three aspects. Sin has three aspects. There is the practice of sin, there is the penalty of sin, and there is the presence of sin. You have been set free from all three of those. The moment you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are set free from sin. Now, let's move on. He says, but now that you have been set free from sin, watch this, and have become slaves to God. 
Watch this. See, we, he, this phrase, these two phrases in, address the idea that as Christians, we have accepted him in two roles in our lives, as Savior and as Lord, which means that we are his slaves. He is our master. Whatever he says do, that's what you do. If he says do this, then you do this. If he says do that, then you do that. The problem is... We want salvation, but we don't want lordship. We want salvation without submission. The problem is we want to use Jesus like a free ticket in the heaven, a hookup in the heaven. But the truth is you got to live this thing. If, he, if he's your savior, then he can't be your savior without being your lord. And if he's not Lord of all in your life, then he's not Lord at all in your life. You do not get to negotiate the terms of your Christianity. If he's Savior, then he must be your Lord. Because anybody can say, my God. But not everybody can say, my Lord. <sighs> so he says, he says, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God. He says, so, so if this is you, you've become, you've become saved and you're a slave to God. He says, the benefit that you reap from your salvation leads to holiness. I didn't make it up. It's in your Bible if you ain't tore it out. The benefit to salvation leads to holiness, which lets me know there is something wrong with salvation that does not lead to living right. Mm, I didn't expect no amens right there, but it's all right. I'm going to preach anyhow. See, we ask the question again, if I'm not holy, will I go to hell? The answer is yes. Here's the thing. But pastor, I'm saved. Well, are you really? Because there is nowhere and no way in scripture that you can truly be saved and still be the same person you used to be. No, no, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and all things passed away. Now, that don't mean that you're going to overnight become this saint, but it does imply that you ought to be doing better than you were before. That decision in your life, you mean to tell me you've been saved 30 years and you still lying and you still backbiting and you still gossiping? Come on, man, it's time to grow up. You mean to tell me you a grown man, 50-some years old, and you still ain't figured out how to control your hormones? Get yourself together. You mean to tell me that you've been in church all your life and you don't understand that you got to show up to church and show up to ministry but you're doing everything else but God's work I'm sick of y'all y'all making me sick up in here you got time for everything else but God miss me with that nonsense because when somebody die you're gonna find your way down here so there's something wrong so so what I'm telling you is that the, if you go to hell, it ain't because you used to be saved. It's because you never were in the first place. How do I know that? Well, pastor, the word says, the word says, if I confess with my mouth, check, and I believe in my heart, uh-oh. See, anybody confess with their mouth. Old folks say a prayer lips say anything. You can come down here and confess with your mouth, but we'll find out if you believed in your heart because you'll start walking right. You'll start talking right. You'll start acting right. You'll start, there is no way you can be saved and watch your church fall apart and you won't do nothing about it. So he says, he says, he says, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And watch this. This is how I know it's about salvation. He says, the benefit you reap from being saved leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. So when you get saved, you reap the benefit that leads you to holiness. And that holiness will take you into eternal life. 
So, but a lot of us, we get saved and we skip the holiness thinking we're going to have eternal life. That don't work. That ain't the way it works. Is, is this, does this make sense? Now, let me stop here and say this. Um, I am allowing questions. Uh, I forgot to tell y'all this. I, I missed this in the announcement because the Holy Ghost had been moving. But you can text in your questions anonymously uh, and we will answer them live on the spot right now. I want to make sure because I'm not here to, to preach you happy. I'm here to teach you something today uh, and throughout this entire series. So if you have questions, you can stop and text them to us and I will answer them right now on the, on the live right now, right now. So y'all know how I do. So just send your message, send your question. I will answer them right now. So, so, so. Again, the, the verse teaches us that, 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 that holiness is a benefit to salvation. Salvation leads us to holiness. In other words, you will no longer be comfortable doing all the stuff that you've been doing, which will lead you to eternal life. Okay? Okay. But now, but now I found something else. Look at Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Look at Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Let me tell you something about, about holiness. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. So we can't get scriptures on, on screen. Is that, is that a no? With no go on those? Can we get the scriptures on the screen or is that a no? If we can't. All right, I wish y'all had told me that y'all be tripping. All right, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Um, I think it's 2 and 4. Yeah, Romans 2 and 4. It says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance? And long suffering, not knowing, watch this, that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Ooh, that's that that, that R word is like a cuss word in church. It's a big word right there. See, so watch this. The text tells us that if God has been really good to you, it don't lead to praise. <laughs> Oh, it don't lead to a shout. It don't lead to a dance, but it leads to a turn. It leads to repentance. And some of us, we try to give God praise for his goodness, and he didn't ask you for praise. God can praise himself. He asked you for repentance. You mean to tell me God been that good to you, and the only thing you got is a thank you? As a matter of fact, your praise might be insulting because God been so good, and all you can say, I sure appreciate it, but you ain't living for him, yet he died for you? Oh, this ain't going to be a popular message right here. So I, I got to find out. So with all this being said, I got to find out what is holiness? Because before we can deal with how to live holy, we must properly understand what holiness is. And today I'm going to share with you two things, what holiness is not and what holiness is. What holiness is not, let's start with what holiness is not. Number one, holiness is not sinless. Holiness does not mean sinless. Mm -hmm. See, see, uh, if holiness was about being sinless, then how do you explain those who live right but don't know God? Again, holiness is not about being sinless, because if that was the case, then you'd have to explain to me how a person that does not get saved, does not believe in God, but they live better than most church folks do. They don't bother nobody. They don't steal from nobody. They don't mistreat anybody. That, that, then you'd have to explain to me how a person can live a right life and still go to hell. If holiness is synonymous with sinless, then you have to explain to me how folks that don't know God can still go to hell, but live a great life. Do you not know there are some folks that don't even love God, they don't even believe in God, but they live better than most Christians do? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Live good. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Okay, so, so, is, so that begs the question, well, pastor, is not knowing God a sin? Yes. 
Because if you don't know him, it's going to send you to hell. How do I know it's a sin? Because in his Ten Commandments, he said, and thou shalt not have no other God before me. Now watch this. Some things are not sin, but clearly are not holy. What? Wait, Pastor Now, what? Some things are not sin, but they're not holy. Remember, holiness is something consecrated, separated and consecrated for ritual or religious or spiritually godly use. Can we agree on that? Okay, so now watch this. Something cannot be a sin, but not be holy. For example, sports. Ain't nothing wrong with going to a sporting event. I'm a Cowboys fan. Don't judge me. My team looking real good right about now. Yeah, it is. Beat the daylights out the Eagles and finna do the same thing to the Panthers today. Ain't that right, Reggie? <laughs> uh, I mean, so, but watch this. Sports is not a sin. Ain't nothing sinful about sports, but it's not holy either. Well, then most of, our, most of our church, most of our, our sister denominations will tell us, well, then it's sin because we shouldn't go to the movies and we shouldn't go to the, to the parties and we shouldn't go to the football games. Well, what? Jesus' first miracle was at a wedding. <clears throat> so, again, sport, so some things are not sin, but they're just not holy. So, so we got to understand that being, that holiness does not mean sinless. It, but holiness, watch this, it's also not negotiable. It's non-negotiable. See, one thing, we, certain, see, what we do is we try to, we, 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 we define holiness with certain sins. Yes, we do. It's all sin, not certain sins. See, our idea of holiness comes from, you know, those certain sins we think, uh-huh, the ones we don't think folk ought to do, right? So, so the unseen, uh, uh, so, but I need you to understand the unseen sins are just as bad as the seen ones. The neglected sins are just as bad. For example, uh, laziness is a sin. As a matter of fact, if you read that parable in the Bible where Jesus was so angry about the servants that were supposed to be serving in the kingdom and doing their work in the church and they failed to do so, he said, you wicked and you slowful servant, you ought to be shamed of yourself. Go to hell. That's exactly what he said. Where there's weeping a gnashing of teeth. He said, since you can't be, since you're going to be lazy in my house, go to hell. That's what he said. I ain't making it up. It's in the Bible. He said, so he, but, but, but we like to think, well, if it ain't, you know, adultery, if it ain't fornication, if it ain't robbing, if it ain't drug dealing, you know, all the sins you think are the big ones. But baby, God ain't authorized you to classify the sins. Oh, so we think folks that ain't doing those things that we classified are living holy. But let me tell you something. They may not be doing those sins, but if holiness was synonymous with sinless, then can't none of us get in. Because it's a sin for you to sleep with someone that's not your spouse, but it's also a sin for you to be 80 some years old, lying on everybody, gossiping with everybody, going down. To, ah, pull up, Pastor Jay, pull up. All of it is a sin. Oh, because they don't commit the ones you think is the big sins. It's non-negotiable. See, our ungodly classification of sin affects our view of holiness. See, we develop our view of holiness based upon what we think is sin. But holiness can only be defined by what heaven says is. See, we are more concerned with how we look down here than how we look up there. Do you not know that a lot of us, we, 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 
we more concerned with how, to, how folks are gonna think about us. Ooh, I don't want nobody to know my business. I don't want nobody to know my stuff because I'm gonna be shamed. But you don't mind looking a fool in heaven. So you worried about folks finding out who you sleeping with in Greenville. But you, don't worry, you ain't got no concern about what the angels been whispering in God's ear about you. You ain't got no concern about everything heaven been saying about you. But you don't, but long as Greenville don't find out. Long as it don't make it to Facebook. Long as it don't make it to social media, you don't care. But heaven has a problem with you. And it's a sad reality when you are more concerned with what people think than what God thinks. And we think we hold it because we got away with it. Because ain't nobody said nothing. Because you ain't got caught. But let me be clear. God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He's omnipresent, which means he's anywhere and everywhere. He can be where he's going without ever leaving where he is. He can bump into himself going and coming. God knows everything. So holiness is about heaven's view, not ours. You see, we cannot change or adapt God's laws to our preferences. See, too many of us have these tailor-made, this tailor-made Christianity. You know, we, we've got churches now that, mm, uh, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. I usually get in trouble, y'all. Um, we got churches now that, well, we're, we're, we just want to bless God because we've ordained the, four, the first uh, gay bishop. And, or we've, 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 we've married the first same-sex couple. And we believe that no, no, no. You do not get to adapt God's rules to your preferences. The Bible is the Bible. I don't care what church it is. I don't care what denomination it is. The word of God is what it is. As a matter of fact, let me be clear. I don't agree with some of the stuff in here either, but it's not my laws. And when I accepted him as Savior, I also accepted him as Lord. And his Lord, his laws are in his word. But you can't adapt the word to your preferences. You can't make the Bible fit what you like. No, 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 the word is the word. It's holy. And so holiness, if you're gonna be holy, it means to stand for, stand for what God stands for. It means to stand against what God stands against. As for me in my house, I don't care about nobody else's, I don't care what they do out there, but as for me in my house, Mm -hmm. So we talked about what holiness is not. So let's talk about what holiness is. Holiness is the key to all blessings, while a lack of holiness is a key to curses. See, I want you to think about something in your life. I want you to think about all the things bad that have happened to you. Think about it. Everything bad that has ever happened in your life, I promise you, can be traced back to some sin. It can. Everything. It, whether it was your sin or somebody else's sin. It can be traced back to sin. So if that is true, then, watch this, everything good and perfect that happens in our lives can be traced back to a level of holiness. Holiness gives birth to blessings. See, some stuff you ain't got to name it and claim it. If you just live right, you'll just get it automatically. I'm in Bible country. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Here's that holiness and his righteousness. And all this stuff you've been praying about, he'll just give it to you. You ain't got no business worried about where it's going to come from if you just live right. Stop lying. Stop gossiping. Stop cheating. Stop doing all. If you just live right, some stuff will just come to you. Ooh, 
would you, I, 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 there ought to be a few witnesses in here that can testify that when you just change this out to live for God and decide to tell sin, no, I ain't about that life no more. I don't, don't stuff start lining up. Don't God start pouring things out. Don't he just start opening doors. Your credit couldn't do it, but you're living better now. Your car couldn't, but you're li- driving better. You're wearing better. Why? Because you decided for God I live and for God I die. Holiness, so that, well, Pastor, what is holiness? If it's not about being sinless, then what is it about? Holiness is about growth. <sighs> Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. Y'all not going to, I'm going to mess you up. Look at holiness. This is going to completely contradict everything I see. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. I want to show you something. I need y'all to promise me y'all can have that scripture thing fixed by next week. I really need that. Uh, All right. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, watch this, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, perfect man. Now, let's go to Colossians 1 and 28. That's, that's just a couple of books over. Now, to, just, just flip over to your, to, your, to your flip back or flip over, whatever direction, whatever. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Now, I want you to see this. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect. In Christ Jesus. There go that word again. Go to Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Now, watch this. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, Saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Now, Pastor, you just got done saying that holiness is not about being sinless or perfect. Yet you just gave me three scriptures that talk about us having to be perfect. Some don't make sense. Well, let me clear it up for you. Y'all do know I would never dig myself in a hole that I haven't already mapped the way out of. So you must remember I've taught you quite some time ago that the Bible was translated to English. Okay? Follow me. Don't miss this. This is very important. It was tra- the Bible that we read is translated to English which means that the original language was not English. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in Greek. Now, the Old Testament and the New Testament are centuries apart. The authors are centuries apart. Now, there is one book in the New Testament, that is actually written original language in Hebrew. Anybody want to know what book that is? The book of Hebrews. (laughs) Okay, now, it was because when they found that book, they had already developed the Old Testament and they were developing the New Testament. And they did not want to leave the book of Hebrews out. We don't even know who the author was, but everything it had to do with pointed to the faith and uh, to Christianity and the cross. Now, let me get back to what I was saying. Pastor, you gave us all these scriptures that pointed to us having to be perfect. So how are you going to tell us holiness is not synonymous with perfect? Well, the word perfect in the English is not the, that's the word it was translated to. But the word in the Hebrew, I'm sorry, in the Greek is mature. It is not perfect. See, 
you got to understand there are no synonyms, no antonyms in the Hebrew and the Greek languages. There's one word for one definition, period. And so, but when you translate to English, a lot of words lose their meaning, like the word mature. So the word maturity transfers into perfect because it's a, it's a word of agriculture. It speaks to the idea that a plant or a produce has reached full maturity and can now be served. Ah, so what he's trying to get you to understand in the word perfect is that it means mature. So when we read that word perfect, we must understand that it means that we are mature. It means you grew up. It means growth. Because there is no way that you can, watch this, live according to all the laws of God and still make it in. Because you were born in sin. What? Pastor, wait a minute. Okay, don't worry about it. I got proof. Go to Galatians 2, verse 16. Go to Galatians. Just go back. Chapter 2, verse 16. And it reads like this. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Watch this. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So on your best day of the week, you still won't be good enough. So what, so what is holiness, Pastor? I'm so glad that you asked. Holiness is God's way of measuring your pursuit of perfection. There are aspects to holiness. There are three of them. The three aspects of holiness. The first one is pursuit. It means perfecting. It means purifying. That's why Paul said, uh, uh, I, beseech ye, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, that you will offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Watch this. So in other words, it's a pursuit of perfection, a pursuit. Holiness, the, one of the aspects of holiness is a pursuit of it. God is not determining your holiness by if you become perfect. He's determining your holiness by how you pursue it. In other words, he want to know how hard you really trying to live holy. Stop lying, talking about it's a struggle. No, it's, a, it's only a struggle if you actually fighting to do it. But if you ain't never trying to live holy in this area, then it's not a struggle. You're just choosing to do this. But God is judging your pursuit of perfection. How bad do you want it? How, do, you go after your, do you go after holiness like you go after a new job? Do you go after holiness like you go after your, uh, a new man, a new woman? Do you go after, do, if some of us could go after holiness the way we pursue the things we really want. Mm -hmm. Can I pull over and say this to our ladies, to single ladies? Don't choose no man that ain't chasing God more than he chasing you. Preach, Pastor Jay. I'm trying to, somebody tweet that, Facebook that. I don't care what you do with it. Don't. Settle for no man that ain't chasing God more than he chasing you. Watch this, because he's bound to find you if he chase God. That goes for us men too. Men, don't you chase no woman that ain't chasing after righteousness, chasing after holiness, chasing after the problem with some of us. Women are too... Oh, so, ah, pull up, Pastor Jay. Some women are just out. That's the problem. Woman, thou art loosed. You loosen everything but the Holy Ghost. And the problem is you can't find the right person because you're chasing everything but holiness. Uh, another aspect of holiness is presentation. It's presentation. It means to be offered to God, which is why Jude said, now unto him who is able to present you faultless. So uh, one aspect of holiness is the pursuit of holiness. Another aspect of holiness is presentation. See, when Jude says, now unto him 
who is able to present you faultless before his presence. What that means, it's not that you ain't ever done nothing. It means that he's going, God, Jesus is going to present you faultless. Watch this, because there is, you cannot be in God's presence unholy. So what Jesus did when he died on the cross, he died so that you could be cleansed and presented faultless. It don't mean I didn't do it. It just means that I've been presented faultless. You can't stand in God's presence unholy. So he says the, the work of the cross is God's way of presenting you faultless. Now, but, but the, the last aspect of holiness is preservation. It means to be set apart. It means sanctified or consecrated. For example, uh, there are certain grounds that are preserved for holiness. Like the church. This church property, it disturbs me. You know, you know we had to put, we had to just find a quick solution and put chains on our parking lot because folk just forgot, this the church. Parking all on the lot, getting high, doing God knows what, because you can't do it in your house or on your... No, you can't pull up here and do... This, this the church. It's holy grounds. But people don't respect the church anymore because we don't respect the church anymore. We do any and everything in God's house. It's preserved. It's holy grounds. Even God thought so much about sanctification that he set a whole day aside. God gave us seven days a week and he said, and remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Sundays are for God. But do you not know we do everything but God on Sundays? Y'all taking y'all kids to cheerleading practice, basketball games, for everything. But you mean, man, when I grew up, I don't care what they was doing on Sundays. We at church on Sunday morning. My grandmama said, baby, I don't care. Y'all can call all the practices down there y'all want to, all the games y'all want to. But, 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 but baby, on Sundays, we go to church and my baby won't be there. And y'all keep asking, well, why they keep doing this stuff on Sundays? Because y'all keep going. With your saved, sanctified, selfish self. Something wrong with you. Start telling these folks now. They can't make you do nothing. Because y'all kill me. Well, I, I will come to church, but I got to go to the volleyball game. No, you don't. You don't. If you don't stand for God, you will fall for anything. But you will take off work for your fume. Your fume, the fume, the funeral. That's what y'all do. You'll take off work for that. But you're going to miss church for the game. It's your selfish self. God said that remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. You mean to tell me you've been in church all morning and you done had good service and by the time the service ends, you already done made plans that ain't godly? Surely you got enough Holy Ghost to last you 24 hours. Oh, y'all mad today, huh? He says, he says, he's, it's preservation. It's about se separation of his grounds of his day. Even his name is sacred. You can't use God's name in everything. Can't use God's name in everything. There are certain acts that are sacred. I never will forget. I went to a concert. I ain't gonna tell y'all what the artist it was, but I went to a concert. Don't y'all start judging me. Don't y'all start judging me. I'm sick of y'all. Don't y'all start judging me. I, I didn't go off there, but I did. I went to a concert. And I, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't working, because y'all do know I run a sound company. I wasn't working, but I was there. I wanted to go see the artist. And I had mixed emotions, because the artist started, the artist forgot that she sang R&B. And she started to slip off in the church. Uh-huh, that's who it was. And so, Fantasia, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to say her name. <laughs> she forgot, because she was raised in church, but she started lifting her hands. And the concert turned into something else. <laughs> and I, 
I didn't know how to feel. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I didn't know how to feel. I'm like, you can't have church in here. This is a concert. But then I also felt like, whoo, y'all need to leave me alone because I'm about to give him a dance right here. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And I remember feeling like certain acts are God's and they belong to him and only for certain settings. But then I discovered, I then I discovered let everything that has breath. And if they can praise him at a concert, sure enough I can praise him in here. The types of, I'm done, I'm done. So what holiness is, is the pursuit of holiness. It's not about achieving perfection. It's, a God, it's about how God grades you on how you pursue perfection. That's what holiness is. Truth be told, you will never reach it in this body. But that ain't what God is asking you for. What he's asking you for is how bad are you chasing after it? That's what holiness is. Because see, some of us claim we're trying to, but you ain't really trying. You ain't really trying. I told y'all I'm done. Come on, let's go, let's go, I'm done. So, there, holiness can occur in two different realms. It's eternally, eternal holiness is perfect presentation in heaven. It is when you make it to heaven and you're presented perfect before God. How? Because God has cleansed you in the blood and wiped away all of your sin. That's eternal holiness. But earthly holiness is the pursuit of perfection that shows up in our lifestyles. You have to be holy. So stop lying. Ain't nobody perfect. Stop saying that. Because all that really is is a cop out and an excuse to justify the fact that you are not choosing to live right. It's a pursuit of perfection. Stop telling me you're trying to stop drinking if you don't ever try it, stop drinking. Stop lying, talking about you trying to stop fornicating and you don't ever really try it. Ain't nobody perfect. God never asked you to, to be holy. He asked your pursuit to be perfect. How bad are you really trying? Do you, I mean, are you really trying? You can ask yourself, are you really trying to be perfect? It's not about perfection. It's about a pursuit of perfection. Are you really trying to stop? Are you really trying to live this life? Are you really trying? Now, if this is the definition of holiness, then it's going to change whether some of us are holy or not. Because can I suggest to you that there are some people who don't church the way you church, but they trying harder than you are. There are some gangsters out there that decided, man, I, I'm sick of this. I, I've been living like this and it ain't been working. I'm trying. I'm trying not to do this. I'm trying to, do, I'm trying to keep getting my life right. They trying harder than you and you've been in church all your life. Do you not know they are holier than you? Why? Because while you're so busy being holier than thou, your holiness is not about religion. It's about pursuit of perfection. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we thank you for showing us what holiness is. We thank you for your son who showed us how to live holy. Lord, we thank you that we are able to pursue you in a way that one day will make us perfect. But we thank you that we can push while we're here to try to be as close to it as possible. We thank you that your salvation leads us to live more like you. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, if there's anybody here that does not know you in the pardon of their sins, I pray that you would lead them to salvation. I pray that you would lead them to get to know you for themselves. I pray that you would show them how to love you. Maybe someone's here today, they need a church home. They want to be baptized, whether they're watching online, whomever it is, Lord, lead them to make a decision for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you today, send us a message. Make your way down the aisle. You can come now. And we want to, if you want to be saved, if you want a church home, you can come now. He's waiting on you. 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 Yes, he is. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Just come on. Just come on. You don't have to keep dealing with that. Just come on. Just come on. If you're watching us online, just come on. Just come on. Send us a message. We got you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on this point of contact, asking that you would do what only you can do. Father, you are the healer. And so we stand in the gap for Tammy's sister, asking, Lord, that you would send your healing hands, dispatch your healing angels to where she is, God. Doctors may be confused, but you are right on schedule. You know all about it. They're practicing physicians, but you are the ultimate physician. Oh, as a matter of fact, you performed the very first surgery when you opened up Adam and created Eve. I thank you for it right now, for healing power. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Come on, brothers, let's go. Let's do this. We um, thank God for um, the opportunity to prepare for communion. Let me explain to you what communion really is. Communion is our opportunity to celebrate what Jesus did on the cross and what he did in the grave. There are two requirements for partaking in communion. One is that you must do so while being a baptized believer. The other requirement is that you do so without an ought against your brother or your sister. That is not an opportunity or an excuse to avoid communion, but it is an opportunity to get right before you take communion. So we ask that as you pray, as our deacon prays uh, aloud, that you would um, pray softly. Uh, we'll have a scripture from our ministers, and then our deacon will pray. We ask that you would stand, turn toward the center aisle. Our deacons will release you by row to come and receive your communion. If you cannot walk, they will serve you. On the cross there is blood for me. On 
on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me Let us stand. The Bible declares that on the night that Jesus had his last supper with his disciples, he identified the disciple that would betray him as well as the disciple that would deny him. He took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it and said, this is my body which will be broken for thee. You may eat. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood, which will be shed for thee. You may drink. The Bible says that once they partook communion, they went out to the Mount of Olives and fellowship one with another. Let me give you a couple of parting announcements. Number one, Make sure you give in your tithes and your offering on your way out. Please give in your tithes and your offering on your way out. I want to remind you on this Saturday, I believe at 10 a.m. Uh, is a church cleanup service. Uh, we'll be having a church-wide cleanup. We need your help to come and help uh, take care of our church. I want to say a very special happy birthday to Uncle Norris. Turned 70 years old. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I also want you to forgive my immediate exit. Um, I have to go support my daughter, and I have one of our members that I need to go check on in Dallas. So I need to part, depart immediately. So please do not take it personally. If I don't get the love on you, shake your hand, but I am in a hurry right now. So I gotta go support my daughter, and I want to go, uh, to go visit one of our members that is in some serious trouble in Dallas, amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forevermore until we all meet again. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, you're dismissed.